Hey guys, this is Vulcan Wolverine. Uh, it's a Saturday morning and I just woke up. Uh, but I wanted to make a video, um, just a short video, and I really will make it short this time. Wow, my hair looks real bad. Um, but somebody left uh, some some negative comments um, on my YouTube channel. I'm not sure which video it was. I think it was a couple of videos. Um, and I, I'm going to leave them up, because uh, I'm going to leave up all comments. Um, but I wanted to let y'all know, one of the, they're using my first name. Um, and one of the comments actually said something about uh, the, my wall of shame. And they said, you know, hey, we, we see you on the south side of your house beating the wall. And that's exactly, it, it is on the south side. Um, so these people are perps. So I want y'all to take a look at those comments, um, you know, and just check them out. Because it is real perps doing that. Um, I kind of I didn't want to make a video... You know, because I'm not doing too well, uh, my mom's going to move me out of this house, um, and I may actually get like an Airstream trailer, uh, and they're like covered with aluminum, uh, but this guy, he's hitting me in the face and the cheek, and uh, you know, it's it's hurting me when I walk about, I'm, I'm good in my enclosure, um, but my mom is going to make me, you know, take that down very soon. Uh, but I did, I, I, want, I wanted to tell you all about those comments, um... It is somebody who is involved in my gang stalking. Because uh, they use my first name and they say, I mean, they got things right about what I've done in my house. The only thing that they didn't get right is, is one of them was like, you know, for the burning to stop, you need to apologize. And there's nobody I've actually done anything to. So um, just the comments are wicked and, and weird and bizarre. And so I want to leave them up. Uh, but I also want to acknowledge them uh, and let y'all know, you know, people people involved in my gang stalking or somebody who they've given information to made a little uh, YouTube channel. And I don't know the name. I heard one of my other, uh, somebody else who's going through it, who made a video. They said it's like Jeff uh, Fuhrer or something like that. It's like a weird last name. I think he just does this. I think that's his job uh, to do this to to people speaking out. Um, let's see what else is going on. One good thing uh, that I'd like to let y'all know is that um, you know in my enclosure I was feeling I was feeling still feeling the guy doing the ELF to me, um, so it was coming through. Um, and what I did is I thought I was thinking that rubber does because it's electromagnetic energy so rubber if you if you put rubber in your clothes or anything like that or you wear rubber um you know it'll it'll just uh neutralize the charge and i'm not saying wear rubber but i went to uh walmart and i just got a like a car mat that goes all the way across for the ones that aren't split into two seats and i put that down where i sleep so that does it it neutralizes the charge because it's electro magnetic energy so um also it's microwave radiation like this energy doubles up as radiation and kind of an electrical charge too um but i put rubber where i slept and it really works that really helps so even if you put it under your mattress or anything um you're going to be grounded that rubber is going to ground you and it's going to it's going to neutralize that electrical charge um let's see what else is going on my dog is still sick um, you know, th these guys, like, I guess this guy does it for a living or something, because he's always at it, I mean, it's been, it's been five to six years that I've experienced this, and I'm not feeling too great, because it's like my mom, it's stressing her out, because, uh, her motherly instincts are coming across something that's unbelievable, so she knows I'm smart, she knows that I'm, like, resourceful, she knows, she's watched me, my whole life, and this, though, this is unbelievable to people, you know, they can't believe that somebody would follow you f to three places, and, uh, you may make it look exactly like schizophrenia, I mean, because you tell, you tell a psychiatrist or anybody like that, um, and it looks, it mimics, uh, schizophrenia, you know, people are after you, they're hurting you, and people like, like my post-traumatic stress counselor, she's a, a great woman, she's very nice, she wants to help, but, um, 
you know, you start saying that you're in pain and these people are shooting something at you and people can just be like, oh, well, there are various forms of schizophrenia where the, the person feels pain uh, on their body. And it's just like, I mean, they can, they can talk away or just like um, make justifications or I'm not, I'm not thinking of the right word, but they can just kind of everything that's real. They can say, oh, that's just a delusion. You know, even things that it's like, wow, I saw a guy walk out with a shotgun now. Um, even that, if they do diagnose you with delusional disorder or something like that, it's like, oh, well, you were just seeing things or you were just hearing things. Because I said, I've heard my neighbor in the backyard talking to the people next door saying, I can hit him from my back window into his kitchen. And they're like, oh, so you were hearing things. So it's like everything real uh, that I experience now is thrown into question because of my diagnosis. Um, so I said go to a psychiatrist. I've you know told y'all you know trust authority figures, trust psychiatrists. I kind of got to back up on that um, because I didn't know uh, you know how bad this stuff gets and how people, even people in authority, are trying to cover it up, even if they don't have anything to do with it. They try and cover it up. Um, so be just very wary about who you call. I called the FBI yesterday again because, you know, he's hitting me around the house. I get in the enclosure and I'm fine. But I hate living this way. I don't want to live this way anymore. Um, and the FBI, because I told him, I was like, well, I've been put into a psychiatric unit. Um, this guy's hitting me with, uh, you know, directed energy weapons. He laughed in my face. He goes, awesome. Okay, well, yeah, just call your local law enforcement. And I was like, well, I've called them, and they can't help me. And probably if I call them, they're going to put me back into a psychiatric unit. He's like, oh. <laughs> and he started laughing. He's like, all right, call your local law enforcement. Bye. Like, didn't even let me talk. So it's like now I am in a zone where if I call people, I'm going to get thrown into a psychiatric unit. Like, there's no, I can't call anybody anymore. And the guy, this guy who's doing it, he has gained so much confidence in this. He's like, yeah, we're just going to get it. Like, I hear him on the microwave here, and he's like, telling, he's like telling his wife, who is not, does not like this stuff. She wants it to end. She's a normal person. Um, he's like, you see, we've got to do it now. We've got to do it. He's retarded. Like, so he's gone from alive. We've got to get him out of this house or something like that to just we've got to kill him because he's retarded. And uh, that's scary. I mean, that's scary to hear somebody... And they have like radiation that they're aiming at you, um, and they're just like, "We gotta do it. We gotta do it." You know who cares? Um, and it's sad, um, but I am. I'm still holding out faith and holding out hope. Um, you know that that this will be a positive in the future. This will come out, and I think we've only got a few more years. I really see that. Like I'm not like I see trends and I see stuff like that, and I see that. You know, Russia banned these weapons. Uh, they're proliferating in our society where people are, it's like a big danger in our society. Because on the streets, I'm seeing the one light cars, the vehicular harassment, a ton. And But the guy, the authority figure who put me in the psychiatric unit, I gave him my YouTube channel. So, um, and, and he was calling my mom and telling her that, you know, he really cares about me and stuff like this, but I'm a terrorist because I'm anti-police and because I'm making videos on the street, like, in my car. So I could get in trouble for making a video, um, you know, in my car. Um, I'm going to maybe go park somewhere and see if I can, you know, do some videos like that. I have two videos that I haven't uploaded because they were made in the car, but the vehicular harassment is just huge it's huge like people with their lights on uh in the daytime and then the one light cars there's tons of them like i couldn't even count how many people in the city uh do that and they do it on this main street by where i live and it's like it's got to be hundreds of people i mean and that makes me sound even crazier but i think what these people like the my my stalkers my immediate stalkers to each side of me um, when they tell people about this situation, they lie to them, and they, they give them some kind of false thing that I've done. I think they either, they call you a pedophile, or you've gotten away with a murder, or something really bad. And I think that's why, you know, they lie about that, and that's why the guy on YouTube, he was probably told something, you know, uh, that I've done something in my past. And I've, like I've told y'all, and like I tell everybody, 
The only thing that I've done that's really bad is smoke pot. And it helps my Crohn's disease. So I don't see it as an evil. I don't see it as hurting other people. Uh, but I will. I have to tell the truth on that because, you know, I do occasionally do that. Um, no, but, but these comments, they were very, like, they were using my first name. They're saying, uh, what did you do that was so bad? And then they they were saying, like, yeah, we've seen you on the south wall, and that's the that's the wall I was hitting, the south wall. So they know they know immediately about my stalking experience. So it's either my some of my stalkers made a little YouTube channel, uh, just kind of made one real quick to make comments, and then it was this other guy, uh, Jeff Fuhrer, who I think he does it to a lot of targeted individuals. That's his job to go on YouTube and, and make negative comments. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, leave those comments up. Um, I was never going to, I never even thought once to take them down. Because that's, that's gravy for us. We want to see how bizarre these people are, how murderous they are. And they don't realize that. They don't realize when they do these actions that they're bizarre weirdos who are murdering people and doing evil. They don't, they don't get it. Like in their heads, they don't see that. So it's easy for us to see. And so I want to leave up their actions, their comments. You know, I want to, uh, you know, tell people about this, but these people don't understand. They don't understand how evil they are. Like, and that's a, that's a very uh, scary thing, because this guy's a murderer. I mean, he's trying to murder me in my sleep. He's trying to hit me in the face, and he'll hit me in the sur my surgical scars. Like, he'll hit me in where I have a hernia up in the middle of my uh, stomach on my surgical st scar. So they're very sick. I mean, they're sick people you know, murderers, um, and, and like, I was, I, on, on my other videos, I was like, you know, trust authority figures, call the cops out, I'd say call the cops out, but all these agencies, uh, calling them, it can get you in trouble, and there are so many people who are trying to cover it up that, um, you know, they're, they're actually not even involved in it, but they're still covering it up because they know about it. Um, and I, I see why somebody left a comment and they were like, you're a perp, you're trying to get everybody to go, you know, tell psychiatrists or go or tell policemen, um, you know, you're trying to get us all screwed over. And I was like, no, I'm not, you know, we should trust authority figures. We should, you know, really trust people to help us. Um, and, uh, I think they're kind of right. I think those, you know, you don't go out, you got to be very, very discerning about who you talk to about this. I mean, call the police, call the sheriff's department, tell them your situation, but you gotta be careful about what you say, because uh, if you say anything about directed energy weapons, anything about electromagnetic energy, microwave radiation, those things are, uh, I think they're, um, they're certain things that, they're, they're like red flag words, you know, where people are like, you know, no way is that happening. So, You've got to kind of tone it down, and this is what I did in the psychiatric unit to get out. I didn't tell a lie, but I just said my neighbors are harassing me. They're doing it in this weird kind of unique way. Um, you know, focus on the physical stuff. Focus on their sabotaging your vehicle, or, um, or you know, they're making loud noises that are apparent to everybody in the neighborhood. Focus on that stuff when you try and get help. Uh... Don't focus so much on remote neural monitoring and how they can just shoot something into your skull and kind of, uh, you know, you're, you're a piece of surveillance equipment and they can, like, see through your eyes. Don't, don't focus on that because nobody's ever going to believe that. I mean, even when this stuff comes out, I think there's going to be confusion on what this microwave technology can do. Um, but I do, like, I pray for, for a ban on these weapons, and I know it's coming soon. Um... You know, I'm just going to hold out for that. I may have to just get an Airstream trailer. Like, my mom is pushing me to go ahead and get out of the house. Um, and I'm not sure she believes me or not anymore. I'm um, sure she doesn't because, you know, it has. Like, it's escalated. It's gone from this guy has a high-pitched sound emitter to these guys are hitting me with ELF from a satellite or a cell phone tower. And, you know, my parents, they said that to me before the satellite or before I realized that I was being hit remotely, um, you know, my dad was like, well, you're going to tell us they're using satellites next. And that's what I figured out that came next. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a horrible situation. It's a lot of lying and, you know, shooting people with radiation and making them look crazy. 
I mean, this guy wants to do that. Like, I don't, I don't even think he thinks he's evil. Um, but, I mean, we know that they are. They're evil because they're trying to kill people, and that's evil. Um, and I'm probably not doing a great video this morning. I just woke up, and I don't know. I've kind of dreaded making another video. It's like I got on this medication, Geodon, and, like, just on, like on Seroquel, I didn't want to make videos. I didn't want to do anything. And, and then... You know, I did actually get close to beating on that wall yesterday, and I'm taking this new medication that's supposed to make me, you know, fine and dandy, free of uh, delusions. Um, and these medicines, they they hurt me. Like, it hurts my brain, it, it hurts my thinking, and like, it. I don't even, I think it may actually strengthen the feelings that you get from the, the ELF and the EHF. Um, but, um... But yeah, I just wanted to kind of check in, tell y'all what's going on with me. Uh, it doesn't look too great, but I mean, I'm still, I'm still faithful. Um, I'm still faithful to God that that He'll make something out of this, and He already has with these videos. And that if I can comfort any of y'all, um, and and you know, I've seen tons of people making videos uh, about this, and I, I flock to their channel. I subscribe to them. Um, and it helps me, it helps me, there's this uh, one guy, and I'm not going to name him or anything, but he's done a lot of, you know, 15 minute videos, which is smart, I think he's like, he kind of cuts them, uh, so they're, you know, shorter, and I, I kind of have a hard time because I ramble a lot, um, but he was, he was talking about a lot of stuff that's, that's like exactly like my case, um, and it gives me a lot of comfort, so I hope that, I hope I give y'all comfort, I hope that, even in the dark times, and even when something goes wrong, it's it's good to hear somebody, um, you know, is talking about the same thing that you're experiencing. Now, my my post traumatic stress counselor and all my psychiatrists, um, like I I've got a new psychiatrist at a residency program, um, but they all they all um, they all believe that uh, all of us like we flock to the internet, and it's some kind of like mass hysteria. They'll do anything to uh, to talk it away. They'll do anything to, you know, just say no, no, no. It's this. It's this mentally. Y'all are all y'all are all having mass hysteria. You're all coming to the same place where uh, these things, you know, have occurred, and and you're all just you're you're all just delusional. Everybody, like everybody who's come to my site, I have I have eleven thousand views now. Eleven thousand views. And like hundreds, uh, like a hundred and something subscribers, um, we're not, we're not just delusional. This is is really happening, and I'd like to say that for anybody who is not being gang stalked right now, this is really happening. And I I told my mom that when I got out, because I did have to, I had to kind of be like, well, I'm working on my delusions, like in the psychiatric unit, because my mom wasn't going to let me out of there. Um, and it's, she's not a bad person, like, I'm not saying my mom's a bad person, I'm not saying she is involved in this, um, she's a good mother, but when your mother talks to an authority figure that puts you in there, and they're saying, oh, you know, and this is a guy with a lot of authority, um, and, and he says that they're just trying to help me, and they, they want me to, you know, we talked about maybe me going to a group home, and I'm just like, Th that'll kill me, if they take my Q-Wave Defenders again, like they did in the psychiatric unit, that'll kill me. You know, if I have to take my enclosure down, they'll probably, I mean, I'll be a lot worse off. I don't know if I'll die, uh, but it'll feel like I'm dying. And y'all know what I'm talking about with these electromagnetic weapons. They hurt, and they're not non-lethal. It's not this no-touch torture, non-lethal. It's no-touch torture, uh, very, very lethal weapons that, you know, really hurt you. I mean, they, they hit, like, because I've got a problem over here. They hit me in the face, and it's like sometimes I can barely talk. Um, that's why I think God, you know, has helped me make these videos. Um, you know, He says what what He wants to be said through me, through the Holy Spirit. And I really believe that, and not in any crazy way where you know there's a burning bush talking to me or something like that. These are this is just my heart. My heart speaks, my conscience, and that's God. You know, that's God. Your consciousness and your empathy. And what's inside of you that you'd call a soul? That's God trying to lead you. And I know, I know He's there. Like I know He's there for us. And uh, you know, I have times of peace. Um, this is very weird. And this guy is is twenty four hour torture. 
He gets other people to help him. Uh, he's an evil man. Like from my from my point of view, he doesn't think he's evil. Um, you know, I don't know what he thinks this is doing. If he thinks he's helping America, you know, test these weapons. I mean, he's ex-military, so he does it militantly. It's his mission. Uh, he's destroying my family, and he knows it. So he knows it's not only hurting me, uh, but he still does it, you know. So there's got to be some kind of reward that he's getting, or he really believes in his cause, or he's just a psychopath, and he likes hurting people. He likes the power of raping somebody in their house. Uh, but I've, I've talked about that, you know, all the time. Um, and it might not be bad, you know, me getting into an Airstream trailer and, you know, putting it somewhere away from everybody where I have at least, you know, 30 feet uh, away from other houses or anything like that. Um, because they have, you know, two guys, they're shooting in on the ground level shooting microwave weapons and then they're just bombing they're bombing my house uh you know with with remote neural i guess remote neural monitoring or remotely shooting me with elf and and the ehf is gone like the ehf i don't hear because of the emitters they're that powerful but it apparently it doesn't knock the elf all the way out and the problem is that when I get something in place, um, it'll it'll work for a while, a long while, if it's strong defense, uh, but he can strengthen that signal. He can strengthen it, um, and I think he adds other weapons to it. Like, the thing about it is, I see all these people doing the vehicular harassment, and there are tons. Like, I didn't know that. I thought this was just a couple of crazy people. Um, but now I'm kind of, I'm hearing stuff about the FBI actually training people and Homeland Security, like training people to gang stalk. Uh, and that is a scary thought. Uh, it is. And I, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be Mr. Frady Cat and like, you know, make y'all kind of go into a mass, mass hysteria or whatever. But, um, you know, I've, I've heard things about people being trained for this, and they think they're doing the right thing. So it's really just this huge confusion uh, where you kind of, your rights and your life get kind of lost inside of this lie and this confusion that authority figures are trying to lie about. And then people on the bottom who are driving around, you know, they hear something about you that's not true, or they make a file, these guys make a file for you and just make up a whole bunch of lies. Um... So it's a lot more complicated than just a few evil people doing it. It's it's actually good citizens who think they're doing the right thing and are actually trained for this uh, to to hurt people who um, who they make up stuff about. Like I I swear, like I've never done anything worse than smoking weed um, in my life. Like I'm a good person. Like I'm a really good person. This through these five years of torture. You know, uh, people look at me and that now, you know, I'm seen as an insane person. Um, and that makes you, that makes you not good because people will gang stalk you. You'll get, you know, you'll get hurt by that. And then they look at you hurting and they're like, look, see, see, he's crazy. See what I told y'all? So it's a big cycle of lies and abuse and rape and torture. Uh, it's happening in America. I wish it wasn't. I wish that I was delusional. Um, I don't know. I mean, would that be easier? I don't know. Um, I wish that I could just take a medication and that it would go away. Um, see, the, those things that I say, like, I mean, I'm thankful that I'm not crazy. I'm thankful that I am resourceful and intelligent and I don't have schizophrenia. Like, I thank God for that. But um, these people chasing me around for the next couple of years until... You know, our government fi finally wises up and bans these weapons, uh, you know, for citizens to use on other citizens. You know, uh, you know I, I don't know if I'd trade that for actually being delusional. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I wouldn't. I guess I'm glad that I'm not delusional or schizophrenic and this is really happening. In the short term, uh, it'll, it'll hurt me. Uh, it'll, because my parents are not, my parents are not in on this. Uh, but they just can't believe it. They can't believe, uh, you know, how bad it is and how crazy it is. You, you, like, the thing is, this guy, he has a wife and two kids. He's, he's very evil. Um, people can't even believe how evil he is. They can't believe how callous and evil that this guy is, you know. 
Uh, he's like the boogeyman. People, if they did believe, they'd have to do something about it. Like my parents and my post-traumatic stress counselor and my psychiatrist, if they could read my mind, if I could just give them my thoughts for a second about what's really happening, and they could be in on this, they would be inside of this house, we'd be knocking on that guy's door, uh, you know, they would be on my team. They would be like, we've well, got to stop this. We would go fight that guy, maybe even physically. Um, it, so, so that's the thought that keeps me going and keeps me from realizing that people are not just against you. Uh, they really might think that you're crazy and need help. That's what my mom, my mom was in the car and she started crying. And these people see her crying. I know they do. They see, like, they shoot remote neural monitoring into my visual cortex and then my eyes work as you know as their surveillance and that's why it's like no but but i'm getting off the subject but my mom said um you know she started crying and she was like me and your dad you know we know that you have a, a mental illness a huge mental illness so it's like she's going down this track where she thinks i'm schizophrenic and crazy um and so that doesn't help me because she's going to try everything Everything that I have to defend my life, she's going to be like, you need to take that down because that's part of the delusion. So they've got my mom working against me, but she's not not in her heart. In her heart, she's helping her son who has a, has a very uh, profound mental illness. I mean, my mental illness must be the most creative form of schizophrenia where everybody that's, that's uh, you know, schizophrenic with me, they all believe exactly the same things. Like, I, I don't see how people can believe that. But then I kind of go back to how evil this guy is and how people really, they want to believe that this isn't happening. They, they want to believe that nobody in our country would waste, you know, not days, but years on torture. Years of torture. I mean, every day it's their job to wake up or get somebody else, to, like to switch places with somebody else and and keep and continue torturing american citizens that's their job like that's this guy that's what he does now he's built his life around it i mean these people they build their lives around uh not just harassing us but killing us killing people in their homes slowly uh with the most with the most amount of pain that you could ever put on a human being i mean that's their job that's this guy's job and he's ex military so who's who is footing the bill for this you know, who is uh, making this guy think that it's right? Like, what what's going on here? And, like, I know um, I know some of the organizations that are involved, and I'm not going to name them. Like, I just don't want to get any, like, because I care about my family so much. So I don't want to come with these huge theories that I have. Um, and, and this guy who's the authority figure, he's watching my videos now. After that psychiatric unit stay and this, this guy who's authority figure, after that, that's when the negative comments started because I gave him my YouTube channel. So I don't know if he's, uh, you know, um, making somebody else leave those comments, if he himself, the guy who put me in there, is, is making the comments himself. But I'm going to leave him up. I don't remember on which video. Oh, I, I think, okay, one of the videos is the the video with Wolverine, uh, or Hugh Jackman, he's in a sweater on the beach, and he's smiling all weird, and it's like, what not to do? Uh, and so that video uh, has some comments uh, that were from my gang stalkers, and then there's some other ones. Um, they're probably going to put the comments on all my videos, um, and I have a bunch. Um, and I'm going to leave them there, because I want y'all, I mean, these people think they're so retarded and bizarre and murderous that... They think that putting these comments up will make me look bad, but it makes them look bad. If any of this stuff, like this guy, he thinks that shooting me with microwave radiation and, you know, killing me in my sleep uh, and shooting electromagnetic energy at me, he thinks that is making me look bad. And it does because it's a big lie and they can make you look crazy. But if people knew that he was shooting this stuff, like he still thinks that it would make me look bad, even if they knew that he was doing this to me. Uh, these people are, they're off. They're off in their heads. They're, they like murder. Uh, they think that being evil and like doing it under the surface or in the shadows is like smart. So these people who are doing the comments on my YouTube video, they're like, oh yeah, we got him. You know, you should apologize and then the burning will stop. But it makes them look like utter trash. It makes them look like, you know, psychopaths. So I'm going to leave it up there, you know, and they can use my first name. That's fine. 
Um, but it did, it did happen, you know, after I was put in the, to the psychiatric unit by this, uh, by this authority figure. And he's the one who really cemented in, in my parents that it was mental illness. He called them and he really screwed that up. And they're not against me. Um, and a lot of people that you'll find that, that are doing things that seem contradictory to your survival, um, it, it seems like they could be against you. A lot of them aren't. They're just, they care about you, and they think you're mentally ill, and they think there needs to be extreme changes to your life uh, to, to change this. And my, to, to my lament, uh, it, is, it doesn't work because this is really going on. So no medicine is going to make this guy stop shooting his weaponry at me. Uh, you know, no, no counseling will stop this evil guy from doing these things. They're not delusions. So... I, I, I get in trouble for telling the truth, you know, I can't, I can't lie, like, I try and lie about it, and, and try and do something else besides fighting it, um, and I can't, I can't, I have to go back, because my mom was like, oh, well, you just lied to us, and the psychiatric, and I was like, yeah, I did, I lied to y'all, in the psychiatric unit, I was like, yes, I need to work on my delusions, I may still have them, I lied, because I wanted to get out of there and get my Q-Wave stuff on, because this guy was nailing me in there, and the thing that my parents are like, well, how would he even know where you were? Saint, Cl you know, the place that you went is is very secretive. They don't give out information. But these people don't realize when I'm walking around, they know where I'm going because they are put. They're doing microwaves into my visual cortex, and they can see. They can create an image out of that of where I'm at. So, and that's that's the craziest thing. I can't even believe in that, and it's happening to me. And I've, I've tested it and experimented with it, and that's what they're doing. Remote neural monitoring is you're the piece of surveillance equipment, and they GPS track you. They probably can, you know, uh, get your image from a satellite, you know, and it's just like people don't believe that they would go to this much trouble for just some, some random guy in his house. Um, and what I try and just let them know is that it's not about me at all. It's about this guy, and he's got he's seeing some big evil, evil big picture He's seeing, and he's like, you know, screw this guy. Yeah, we got to test this weaponry and do all this evil stuff. Um, and it, it sucks. It sucks. Um, but I just wanted to kind of check in with y'all. I really, like, I don't know. I start taking this medication, and I, I stop wanting to make videos. It's like, you know, I wanted to make tons of videos. Like, every day I'd get up, I'd make about three videos a day, you know, just telling how I feel. But this stuff, it makes me so unmotivated and just... It makes me feel crappy, um, but I'll, I'll continue to take it, like, to try and make my psychiatrist, my parents happy. I'll try and make them happy and and actually survive this, which is going to be hard. Um, like, it's really, really hard. It's hard seeing my mom do something that she, she thinks is so right in her heart, and I see her motherly instincts fighting with her brain because she wants to believe me and know that I'm not stupid or crazy, but then on the other side, her brain is telling, you know, she's talked to this guy, he put me in a psychiatric unit. The fact that I got put into a psychiatric unit is pretty much something that, you know, all, all that she needs to be like, okay, well, he is, you know, he is mentally ill. And I see these two sides of her fighting, and she's trying to work and hold the family together. My dad, you know, he's coming back from his aneurysm, but it's still a, a hard road for him. Um... You know, and he, he thinks the same thing as my mom, and they really want to help me. You know, they want to help me. Um, they're not, you know, they haven't been taken over to the other side or anything like that. Um, and it's hard because I'm trying to be a good son. I put a burden, you know. Well, I haven't put a burden on them, but these people, you know, killing me in my home, it makes me feel guilty. It makes me feel like I'm putting a burden on my family. Um, and I'm not, like, I'm not a selfish guy. I would... And I told, I told my post-traumatic stress counselor, I was like, dude, I was like, you couldn't give me millions of dollars to, uh, to accuse somebody of creating pain to my body unless I was a million, trillion, billion percent on this. I, I, I'm a million, trillion, billion percent on these guys doing this because I've had Crohn's. I, got, I had Crohn's when I was 12. I understand internal pain. I've had it for my whole life. This is not internal pain. This is external pain, external things that people are shooting at you. Um, and, like, I would never, ever, ever accuse somebody of creating pain to my body 
unless I was really sure. Um, so I'm not going to accuse this. I, I I don't accuse this guy unless I'm I'm a hundred million trillion billion percent sure, in which I am. I mean, if they could be with me in this house, and and uh, you know, feel kind of the pain that I've had, you know, my parents would would we be over at their house? We'd probably be getting into a physical fight with them. My mom would be would just jump on his head and just start scratching him, and that's what keeps me going. If if my family members and my loved ones really knew. Uh, they would be with me, uh, and they still are. They're they're kind of working at cross, uh, you know, um, at the, on the opposite end. So it seems like you know they're they're trying to hurt me sometimes, but they're not. They're not. It doesn't seem like they're trying to hurt me. That's not what I meant. Uh, it seems like they will maybe hurt me if they take certain things away from me, but they're trying to help me. Um, Oh, and check this out. So the guy next door who's the organizer for all this, uh, he's been calling my dad. He's been calling my dad and saying that he wants a privacy fence uh, for the yard. So he wants a big wooden fence. It's a privacy fence uh, separating us. And you know why he wants this? He wants this so he can go up and down that fence and shoot stuff into my house. Uh, and he's calling my dad, a person who I think that they gave him the aneurysm. I think they almost killed him. And he's calling my dad. I saw him talking to my dad in the backyard as if nothing was happening. As if he was just like this regular guy. And that makes me so mad. That makes me so freaking mad. And like I wanted to just tell him, do not call my family or I will do something to you. Of course I'm not. Um, of course I'm not. I, all I can do is defend myself. Um... I don't know what God wants me to do. I really don't. Um, I know he wants me to make these videos, which, like, almost all of my psychiatrists, and, like, my psychiatrist and my post-traumatic stress counselor, uh, they don't. But they don't want me to make the videos for the reason that, um, you know, people might leave negative comments. But I'm all about that. They do. I'm going to leave them there. Like I told y'all, I'm going to leave these comments there. They use my first name. Uh, they knew the wall that I was beating, so it's either this guy, like the the people on either side of me, either they made up a YouTube channel real quick, or somebody that they gave the information to. Um, so it's it wasn't random people, you know, who were just trying to get on my channel um, and be and you know be trolls or whatever. It was actually people involved in my gang stalking. So that's why I want to leave it up, and I want to leave it up so y'all can see that. Um, now the the vehicular harassment uh like is so it's so prevalent um like i I'll go out of this neighborhood and immediately I'll see people with one lights on their car, you know one light on their car uh the people with lights on during the day i I kind of uh i shy away from from saying that they're doing anything because people they they use their running lights or some people will turn on their lights during the day. Uh, but the one light thing, uh, that's a definite, that's a definite, uh, you know, stalking uh, maneuver. And so these people, you know, I see them a lot. And one time, I, this white, like a white uh, SUV was doing the one light thing behind me, like following me. Um, and they followed me to a gas station. And the guy got out, and he had this big beard. You know how the, the Masons have the big beard? They, they have, like, Solomon-type beards. You know, Rick Ross? Rick Ross, the rapper, had this big beard. So it was a guy who came out of the car. He had this big beard, and he, you know, shaved his head, and he was wearing all gold and stuff like that. And so uh, by what I saw, and because Rick Ross, like, has the same appearance, I was like, okay, well, that guy's a Mason. And uh, I'm afraid that is a group who's involved in this, and they have a lot of people uh, for their cause. Now, I don't want to, that's a theory. That's a theory, so take that as a theory. And I know I'm being a, being a little bit of a fraidy cat. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to be that until I kind of get on my feet because uh, I don't want my parents to get hurt. Um, I don't want this guy who threw me into the psychiatric unit to do it again. So I gotta be kind of careful. I still want to make the videos because this is really happening, um, but I've kind of been, I've been, my wings have been clipped a little bit. Uh, it's gonna grow back. I'm gonna fly again, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I do, I do want to keep it toned down a bit and just tell y'all what's going on with me. Maybe I haven't toned it down by by saying it is this guy next door. 
um, you know, just by saying these things, but, you know, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best here because I, I can't stop making the videos. I promised y'all, I promised myself, uh, I made a promise to the big guy. I made a promise to him the, that I will do these videos because in my heart, um, gosh, I'm already at 40 minutes. Uh, but in my heart, um, you know, that's where he's leading me because that's the only thing I can do. It's like, that's the only thing I can do. I can't, like, I was trying to call a bunch of people and call authority figures and hoping that somebody was high up enough, uh, you know, to help me, to, you know, help me with a lawyer or get, you know, suing this guy or something like that. Uh, but that didn't only fall through. That actually got me into more trouble. Um, and I really want to stay out of that psychiatric unit because uh, they take your Q-Wave stuff. You know, they take it from you. Because uh, you can't have anything weird like that. And th this guy, oh, he hammered my head in. I mean, burned me every night in that uh, psychiatric unit. He made it really dangerous, uh, you know, for me there. Because there are a lot of dangerous people there. And they're looking, you know, to get into a fight or whatever. Um, there were a lot of great people, too. The nurses and some of the patients. But uh, wouldn't want to, you know, nice place to visit and all. If you know what I mean, <laughs> but you wouldn't want to live there. Um, so, so I guess I'm just I'm just doing an update. But I really want to let y'all you guys know what's in my heart uh, about this stuff, and I'll keep fighting. I mean, there will never be a time where I stop fighting. But the things things have changed for me because uh, my mom is like, we're just gonna sell the effing house, and you know you can get into, and you know she's very angry about this, and she's angry at me. And some of y'all may know this, that you've gone through so much, you've been tortured, you've been fighting for years, uh, but you're seen as like a burden, or you're seen as like crazy or irresponsible. And so that's what's happening to me. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and I want to tell y'all, um, these videos, I'm going to have to go to, actually to my parents' house, because when I'm at my house, I can't upload videos. Um, I can't even, sometimes my windows will just close like the the internet windows, they'll I'll pop them up. They'll just close out. So this guy is really hacked into my computer, um, so where he can stop anything he wants to. I actually have to go to my parents and get on their internet, and I pay like a lot. I pay like forty bucks a month for my internet. Um, the guy came out. That guy actually came out yesterday and was like, "Hey, nothing's wrong with your internet. Uh, you know, I checked everything outside. Everything's running good." So it's like, uh, my internet's working perfectly, except when I try and upload a YouTube video, uh, which I find very, very, um, very intriguing. Not at all. I mean, I know it's this guy. This guy is definitely doing it. Um, all right, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and close it down. I'm at 45 minutes. Um, I do want to read to y'all what's on my calendar in my bathroom. So I put this calendar in my bathroom, um... You know, so I can look at it instead of realizing there are people watching me on the toilet. Um, but it says, let me see if I can. I'll just read it. It says, uh, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to, to the rock of our salvation. So I just wanted to give you all a little bit of Psalms. It's one of the Psalms uh, 95.1. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. And I think a lot of us can really relate to that. He is our rock, and uh, he's got his hand on this. I know he does. He has his hand on me. He has his hand on all of y'all. Um, even though this gang stalking stuff is going on, he's got his hand in this. Uh, so we've got to have faith. And that's, I'm, I'm uh, kind of being battered around uh, more so than I was before. Uh, before I went to the psychiatric institute, so, or institution, it was basically, I mean, I'll tell you, I think I've told y'all, it was basically, uh, somewhere where they put people, um, a stabilization center, like, and, and because I called somebody, and I was like, you know, my neighbor is shooting me with high-pitched, uh, you know, microwave radiation, basically, and so those were the key words that, um, you know, they were able to, put me in the psychiatric institute, or psychiatric unit, I'm sorry, emergency, it's like an emergency psychiatric unit, so I was driving into the emergency room, the guy, the, the guy who put me there lied to me so bad, 
Um, and, and everybody's fine with that. Like the, my post-traumatic stress counselor, uh, the psychiatrist that I have now, they're fine. They're like, yes, yeah, sometimes they have to lie to get you in here. But this guy was promising physical tests. Uh, he was promising that I wouldn't have to tell anybody about the situation when I got to the emergency room. Like, he set me up. He set me up, and I'm not going to say too much about him, and hopefully that will keep me out of trouble. Like, I won't say exactly who he was or what he's connected to. Like, just, like, on the surface, like, what his job was. Uh, and I'm not going to say that because he's watching my videos. I wish I could tell you all that because uh, it would keep you all from calling the wrong people. But I've got to be careful about what I say because there are people you know, watching my video, and I'm not sure legally if they can throw me back in the psychiatric uh, unit. Like, I just, I'm not sure. But I know that he could call my mom, uh, and now, see, this guy, this guy who put me in there, he can call my mom or my dad, and then the guy next door who's the orchestrator for this, who is, is killing me in my sleep, he's calling my dad, you know. So this is a nightmare for me. Um, I know it's going to work out, like, even though it's a nightmare, but it's like, this guy could call my dad and just like, oh yeah, well, we, we heard him yelling or something like this. He could say anything. He's a liar. Um, and like, I almost wanted to, my brother and my dad were like talking to him in the backyard and I wanted to just go over there and say, stop talking to this guy. He's trying to murder me. Like, and I will, I'll spit in his face and say, you know, stop talking. If my dad ever talks to him again out here, I will go. I'm just going to run up to him and be like, dad, stop talking to this guy. He's a murderer. Let's, you know, and he will never, ever make that fence. He'll, if he pays for it, you know, and puts it on his property, he was actually trying to, like, move it up. Like, telling my mom and my dad that he wants to move it to where, like, it would, like, my mom wouldn't even be able to sell the house. Um, so he's a jerk. Just a big jerk, like the biggest jerk in the world. I I, I want to say meaner stuff, but I'm trying to be uh, <laughs> more more family oriented. <laughs> That's funny. I'm um, trying not to cuss too much though, because um, it makes me look bad. You know, it makes me look bad. Um, and I'm not like you guys. I don't care what people think of me. Um, like that's, I mean, I make these videos and I make them when I right when I wake wake up, so I look horrible, you know. I I stutter. Um, I don't care about looking bad, uh, but I do care about my family. Um, I, I care that, you know, they could make my family hurt more. I do care what God wants me to do, and I do care about um, staying out of pain. Like this guy, you know, if I go somewhere where they take my personal defenders, um, and you know, like, my parents turned off my emitter, so that night, there were two nights in there that I went into shock. You know, my body got cold uh, from this guy shooting um, the electromagnetic radiation at me. Um, and it, like, I got, I was sleeping, you know, in, in a psychiatric unit where they're like, well, at least now you're away from all that and you can rest. And that was not the case at all. That was a survival, like, I almost did not survive that thing because I had none of my equipment. And it's like this guy, you know, he knew where I was because of remote neural monitoring. Uh, and then he does that. He, he, Like it took him, it did, it took him a couple of days. It took him like four days uh, to pinpoint me like when I went to the emergency unit. Uh, it took him a while because I think they have to go with the remote neural monitoring and then they have to use a kind of a GPS or a, a satellite um, kind of surveillance. So it, it does take them. When you go to a new place... Uh, sometimes they won't know where you're, where you are, and it will take them a while. Um, but anyway, I'm at 50 minutes, guys, and I just want to give y'all an update. More updates to come, um, because, you know, we're gonna get through this. We are gonna get through this. Me and you guys, all you targeted individuals, there is another side. We're, we're almost there. We're almost to that light at the end of the tunnel. And I don't mean death. I mean, uh, from these weapons being banned and some good stuff happening, uh, for us, because we've been through so much suffering. Uh, I've been through five years of constant torture where I can't even go to sleep uh, because I smoke pot. And that is just unbalanced. It's injustice. Uh, it's retarded. It's retarded. And these people, they use whatever they can to kind of put their tentacles into you and they just sit there like a parasite and just 
they're murdering people, but then they're looking at you and trying to look at you under a microscope and say that things that you're doing are worthy of murder. See, we've just, like, this guy is, like, he's so messed up. He's, like, so dark and demonic. Um, he's, like, you know, this, he's retarded, see? And he's been, he's been torturing me for two years. So he's, he wants to physically hurt me and then look at the pain that he's giving me and, and say, look, see, he's retarded. So it's, like... It's like uh, the worst thing any person could ever do in the universe. Like, I'll stick to that. It's worse than just murdering somebody outright, because that at least has a little bit of mercy. You know, you're offing them. This is years. This guy would do this if I stayed here. He'd probably do it for years to come. Like, his daughters would grow up in that house with him trying to murder the neighbor next door. And he has two daughters who... If you guys know little kids, they soak up everything like a, like a little sponge. They know more than people give them credit for. And he is just screwing up his kids' future to do this. He's screwing up my family, his family. He's just, I don't understand. Like, he must be getting, uh, you know, money for it. Or he must really, really have a belief uh, that doing this, that killing people in their homes is like a good thing for this country. I have no idea. I'm at a loss because this is the most bloody, uh, evil, just hateful thing that anybody can do. It, I mean, it is. It's it's so hateful and ridiculous. And I'd use the words demonic and Satanist. It's it's those things. Like I I've called this guy a Satan worshiper. He's used that. He's like, honey. Like I'll hear him talking to his wife. He's like, honey. He he thinks we're Satan worshippers. We've got it off him. And and the thing is, I don't even care if he knows that he's a Satan worshiper or not. When you kill somebody in their home and you torture them and you split up families and make families not trust each other and destroy things, you're you're worshiping Satan. Like I have got news for him, you're worshiping Satan, like because that's what Satan loves. He loves like people being in chaos and hurt and people not being able to help each other. That's what Satan loves. He loves that. He wants to disconnect all of us from our families. He'd like us all alone in our house, uh, fighting this alone. That's Satan would love that. Um, but it's just like, and, and here's a movie reference again. I, I know I have a lot of them. But it's like, you know, Harry Potter, uh, when when he's like uh, isolating himself because of Voldemort, and, and the, the girl Luna Lovegood says, you know, I would think that's what, uh, you know, evil would want. He'd want to separate you from all your friends because that then you're easy. Then it's easy to take you down. So don't, don't go away from your friends or your family. You know, stick with them. Uh, there are people who love you, and they may do some stuff that hurts you, but they're not trying to. They're not trying to. My mom's not trying to hurt me. She really thinks that I have a mental illness. Um, you know, these guys, they make it look like schizophrenia. They make it look like a mental illness while they torture you. Um, and it's just, it's real. It's real. It's true. Um, I've never been delusional. I've had Crohn's disease. Like, God has not given me the challenge of mental illness. Like, I've had depression and anxiety, but I never hallucinate. Um, since I was 12, I've had Crohn's disease in my body, so I know internal pain. And I know this is external. I know the direction it's coming from. You know, I know the, the directions that it is coming from. Um, and, you know, I'm just not crazy. Like, I mean... And I, I say that, I say, like, I wish I was crazy sometimes because then I could take a pill and all the pain would go away and these people wouldn't even be there because it'd be my delusion or whatever. Um, but as I've tried millions of times, I mean, I was on 800 milligrams of Seroquel. If I was delusional or schizophrenic, uh, it would have gone away at 800 milligrams. Um, but it didn't. It made it worse. And this medication, I'm taking this and I've started hitting the wall again. So it's like when I wasn't on any medication and I was I was just on Lyrica, um, I was I was calmer and more able to handle it. Now I have you know I'll get very angry and I'll hit the wall because this guy's murdering me and he's just like telling everybody you see you see but you see he's trying to point at me with what he's done to me violently and say you see look he's retarded or something like that because he thinks that it's further along than it is. He's he's going along with the program that he's hit me in the head with microwave radiation, so I have to be retarded by now, right? Wrong, wrong. Um, you know, God's made my head very hard. <laughs> I have a hard head. 
Um, God has given me certain talents to get through this, just as he's given y'all certain talents, everybody who's experiencing this. God has given you strength, and if you dig down deep, um, maybe that's what he wants us to do. Maybe God wants us to dig down deep and really, uh, and really do something good, even though these people are doing something really awful and evil. Um, and that's what I'm going to strive for. I'm going to strive for turning this into good, uh, no matter what happens. I know my family loves me. Um, and I know I have friends that love me. Um, I feel alone now. I feel alone, but with you guys, I feel strong. I feel strong because I know y'all are experiencing the same things. You know, I saw a new guy making videos, and, like, he had been going through it for a while, um, and just watching his videos and watching what he says about it, and sometimes, sometimes it's hard for people making videos because, you know, they don't want to appear crazy if they need to get a job, um, and they're worried that, you know, people won't believe this stuff, but it's still very strong uh, to come out and make videos. And sometimes I think our words falter uh, because it, it's a technology that's new. So you're trying to explain this new technology that's really hurting you. Uh, but I see people and they're doing it and, and they're just trying to do the right thing, trying to get information out. And it, it warms my heart. It builds me up. It gives me goosebumps. Um, you know, and I know God has his hand on this. And maybe if, if we weren't involved in this, all you guys, you targeted individuals who have so many talents and so much intelligence, maybe if we weren't attacked, it, it, it could be worse. It could be worse than this. Because at least now we have information. We can stop it. Uh, you know, we can get the information out. I know um, OSI um, is, is about organized gang stalking. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, join them. Um, I, I may even ask Anonymous if they can help with this. And I don't know how I'd get in touch with Anonymous because they're Anonymous. But, uh, you know, I, I might I might try and get them to do something because this guy's hacking into my computer. Um, I'm sure Anonymous already knows about this stuff. Um, but, and I, I don't know about that. Because that, they're, they're, it's just a bunch of people and they, they're making Anonymous look bad, like they, uh, the government is making Anonymous look like terrorists, you know, and a lot of the organizations that Anonymous has gone up against, they make them look like they, you know, that they're violent people. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'm going to think, I'm going to still think about it. The, the only thing that I know for sure is that I will keep making videos no matter what. That's the only thing that I can say for sure. Um, I don't know how this is going to end up. I don't know where I'm going to end up because my mom is like, you're definitely not staying in that house. Um, she's like, you know, you don't have to move out immediately, but that is no longer an option. And maybe I just need to kind of, um, you know, give my mom her credit because she's got a motherly instinct to get me out of here. I don't know. Like, she's doing it for the wrong reasons because she thinks I'm nuts. Um, it hurts so bad. It hurts so bad. Wow, it hurts so bad. Yeah, when your family, like, doesn't know what to do and they think that you're crazy and you're really telling the truth, that hurts so bad. Wow. I mean, it hurts my heart so bad. Uh, but I know there there's a reason for this, and it's only going to be a couple more years because this microwave technology is being used in some of our covert jets. Um, you know, even their, you know, the, the goggles that they put on use microwave energy to see through things. So people that are going up in the really high-end jets can actually see as if the jet was invisible. Um, so these technologies, and that was on 60 Minutes that they did that. Um, this stuff has been in the news, too. It's if people want to look for it, they'll find it. Um, you know, but I just, I want these weapons to be banned. Uh, like, my family, like, I miss... I, I mean, they, I don't see how they can trust me if they don't believe this. They So it's like... You know, my grandma's getting older, and, you know, I need to go visit her, and, you know, there, there will be a day, and I hope it's far from now, uh, that she needs help, and she needs people to take care of her, um, and I don't know if I'll be trusted enough by my family now that I could help. Uh, wow, that, that hurts. It hurts so bad. That hurts, just not physically, but it hurts, like, emotionally. Uh, but I, I have faith. I have faith. I want to tell y'all, like, like, I don't, like, these videos are meant to document exactly how I feel. 
And sometimes I get kind of mixed up with, I want y'all to be strong, and I want to tell y'all good things so that y'all have hope and, uh, you know, not go down, not say all the, the really bad things. Um, but I, that's not what God is leading me to do. God is leading me to tell the truth in my heart. Um, he's telling me to be totally honest on these videos, not... Like, if I go to a psychiatric unit, I am not sure what I'll tell them because I will tell them whatever I have to do to get out of there uh, so I can get my equipment to defend myself. I mean, and I've told them, like I've said, you know, he was doing EHF, extremely high frequency. Now, with these emitters on the wall right by his house, that has gone away. Like, so I don't know any kind of mental illness where you can put up technology, Q-Wave technology, up on a wall and the EHF completely goes away. And what I'm talking about EHF, I'm talking about the extremely high frequency sound that sounds like tinnitus. I no longer have that anymore. Like that that sound that they were trying to pump into my house is completely gone because of technology that I'm using. He can do the ELF, which makes no sound. My dog hears that. My dog hears the ELF. I've seen her, you know, when I've been getting hit by it, I've seen her like... Um, you know, you know, just like kind of whimper and like put her head under stuff to to get away from it. And I did. I had a um, I don't know. I guess I want to respond to this comment too. I had somebody comment that, "How are you still with all the defense that you have? How are you still being gang stalked?" And I didn't. They they kind of worded the question really weirdly. So, um, yeah, I didn't really understand it. But it's like this guy, like I've been fighting with him for so long. And I think that they can just strengthen the signal. I think that it, they can either strengthen the signal or just get more weapons pointed at it. And it's like it's harder for uh, basically these Q-Wave emitters are making a huge 100-foot force field around them. And I've got the plugs from Altera that ma basically make your walls like a force field against uh, EHF and ELF, EMF, you know, in general. Um... And it's like, I guess you guys know this, that um, even if a little bit gets through and hits your flesh, it, it still hurts, you know. So when I get in my enclosure and I have my shielding on, you know, I may wake up the next morning and feel a little bit, like, uh, stiff. And I may feel some pain in my hips. Oh, this is another thing. But I want to finish this question. When they, they asked, how am I still being gang stalked? Um... It does. Like, he can strengthen the signal to go through stuff. I think what, what happens, and this is a theory I have, because these people don't know what you're feeling. They're either either surveilling you to see movement or, you know, if they're hurting you. But I think that it's even, um, it's even more, uh, it's more accurate than that because they remote neural monitor you where they can kind of tell if you're hurt. They can, they can kind of, I, I think, I think this, this is a theory. Um, but I think they can actually, they have a, a readout if you're, if you're having pain or not. That's a theory. That's a theory. Um, cause I don't, I, I'm not on their side. I don't have the equipment. Um, if I did, I could figure this out a lot better and make a lot better defenses against it. Um, oh man, what was I going to say? I had something really good to say. Oh man, maybe I'll remember it for the next video. Oh, okay, yeah, this. I heard on another video by uh, a doctor, an anesthesiologist, and pain, pain, um, I guess a, a, a chronic pain doctor, and he was saying, like, they, like I told y'all, they were hitting me in the hips, right? When I would sleep, and I was like, that's a weird place to hit me on the hips, and it really hurt, but what, they're, what, what happens is the ELF, uh, it, it hits your bone. So wherever there's bone, it's actually hitting the bone, and that's what causes you pain. I think it hits the muscles and the nerves too, but if they hit on a bony protuberance, like your hips, like something that's sticking out, like, and they hit the bone of it, uh, that can hurt you. And I have no idea how that works medically or scientifically, uh, but the ELF, if they hit you in a bone, like a bone, that's why they'll hit you in the hips sometime, or they'll hit you in the back of the neck, or things like that, because they're going for bone, or, or they hit the back of your, your skull, because there's more bone there. Um, but actually, these guys, really, they hit me everywhere. They hit me in the front of the head, like over here, and on the side, and then it'll sometimes it'll be in the back. Uh, so they just switch it up, you know. 
And I, I, I pray to God that they don't have another uh, sat remote satellite hook up, but seeing all the vehicular harassment, I'm not sure how many people are remotely hitting me. I know the guy, the ex-army guy, is definitely hitting me remotely, but I'm not sure if somebody else in the city, you know, is also hitting me remotely, because I have a lot of shielding, and I mean, there the signal is, it comes through sometimes. Now, the rubber that I put, I bought like a car mat, I told y'all, I put a vinyl, um, a vinyl shower curtain and then the rubber of the car, and then I put something over it so I wouldn't, you know, hurt my back or anything, because the, the car mat has a lot of uh, plastic-like, you know, decoration on the top. Um, but that really helped, like putting putting some rubber under you, and you don't have to put it right under you, you know, you can put it and then put a big, like a quilt or something, or even probably if you put your whole mattress over it, it'll still cause you relief, because that rubber, this is electro electromagnetic energy so there's an electric uh element to that you know it, it that that's why it, it feels like sometimes on the whole side of your body there's electrical pain it is an electrical current uh, it's electromagnetic so rubber is really a good thing to neutralize that because you're grounding yourself and you're not allowing it like once it hits your body uh you're connected to rubber and that's that's reducing the electrical force that it has um, so that does, it worked great. Like I slept last night with a uh, uh, lesser amount of pain uh, than usual. Um, I just felt pain. Let's see, when I woke up, I just felt pain a little bit on my hip and a little bit on the side of my head. Uh, so so I, would, I would really recommend you can go get a car mat, a uh, rubber car mat for the front of the car where the seats aren't separated for like 20 bucks and you put this under you and it will reduce uh you know it'll reduce the pain by a lot um and y'all see my y'all can see my enclosure still got it up I don't, can y'all see that am i pointing towards it yeah i don't know for how long though i don't know how long my mom will let it go because she's like you need to you need to live a normal life you need to be uh you know in a room in a normal bed you know and i'm not gonna have this you know and it's just like, uh, now, like, I, I cleared it with her, you know, the aluminum paint, the enclosure, I cleared it with her, and at the time, she was like, yeah, do whatever you need to do to get out of pain, but then, now, she's kind of flip-flopping and saying that she had so much other stuff to deal with that she really couldn't deal with that at the time, and now it's all crazy, um, so, and I think that's a lot, it has a lot to do with the guy who put me in the psychiatric unit, you know, telling her, hey, we care about your son, but he's doing this and he's doing that. And once she hears something from an authority figure, she's like, oh, okay, well, he's crazy now. You know, so it's not her being bad. It's her wanting to do the right thing. And these people will use that. They'll use that on people. They'll use people's want to do the right thing to actually turn them against people. Like, um, and that's the saddest, most heartbreaking thing about all this. My parents are not, you know, uh, stalkers. They're not with these people, but... They want to do the right thing, and sometimes when you're not given enough information, uh, you could really hurt somebody trying to do the right thing. Um, and that that's that's a hard thing, and I'm going to let you all know what happens. Uh, you know, I'll always probably have a computer and an internet. I'll be able to go to my parents' house. I'll definitely, you know, still have the phone, even if I become homeless or something like that. Um, I wish I could have... Uh, fix this but it's been years of it since the 1980s and people that are very intelligent uh they really are at a loss people that are good and intelligent they're at a loss when they come against this stuff and so it's weird because i've said this a couple of times good people are at a loss and they end up hurting each other and it ends up being confused but the people who are in on this like they're doing it they know right where they fit and that is a hard thing for me to see like it's hard um, because it seems like the evil people that enjoy stalking and psychologically hurting people, they know where they fit, they know they're backed up by corruption, um, that they're just, they're sure of it and convicted that, you know, they should just kill people as they please. Um, and, and they know they do, they, they get into this, um, they know exactly how to sabotage your car, uh, without you being able to prove it to people, it's a game for them, like this, killing a human being in their home is a game. And then I watch the good people who want people to 
uh, have potential for life. They want people to do good, and I see them just, they're broken down, and they're at a loss, and they can't deal with this stuff. They don't know how to. They don't know how to get the to get it away from these evil people like to get these weapons away from them um and that's something that's hard for me to see because i want you know i i want this to eventually go away like i want this to eventually you know be banned it needs to these people these are just people in my neighborhood that are just like yeah let's kill this guy it's not no authority involved it's no no accountability uh because some ex-military guy wants to kill me in my house and because there are some corrupt factions that will allow this to happen. You know, they're like, yeah, kill him. You know, I've seen the worst of people. I've also seen the best of people in this situation. So it's kind of a split 50-50. I've seen some very evil people who don't... I don't even know this one person who stays with them. It's either a man or a woman. I know it's not his wife, uh, but it's a man or... I don't even know their gender. I've never seen them, but they are just like, kill him. Like, I hear their voice, and they're like, go ahead and kill him. Yeah, we need to. He's retarded. He's like, this. screw this guy. You know, microwave him. Um, and that's a person that I've never even seen. I don't know their gender. Uh, so that's obviously crazy. But the thing is, they want you to appear as crazy as possible. So if I say that, I'm like, this person that I don't even know who they are is in on this. It makes me just seem crazier. So, uh, and that's that's one of their major points is to, to make you look crazy while they hurt you and murder you slowly. Um, and that's what this is. I mean, I'm I'm very sure of it. I'm 100% sure this guy could argue with me, but he's not, it's not like he's trying to win an argument. He, he knows he's not going to get caught. He knows he's in the shadow. He just wants everybody that's against it to get out of his way. And so he'll say whatever he needs to to make people just get out of his way so he can do this. Um, like, he's a, a rapist and a murderer. Like, he's very aggressive about it. Uh, he may think that, I guess, I don't know, I'd like to know what his motivations are for this, but nobody will ever know, because whatever organization that he's connected to, because these guys from the, an ex-Marine, and somebody who I think had military service, they followed me to this house, they, they talked to him, and then he immediately agreed to do it, he was doing it for three months, uh, while I thought that it was just tinnitus from the other guys, smashing me up so bad at the apartment complex um and uh yeah it's just I, I i don't know if i was if i was a human being and people brought me microwave weapons and said we need to watch this guy and torture him in his home i would be like get out of my effing face you effing losers what are you talking about and especially with him i'd be like i have two daughters or you well he wouldn't even have to say that he'd just be like he could be like i have two daughters i'm not doing this this will destroy my family and they would have left. They would have just left. They would have been like, okay, that's cool. Or they would have tried to get somebody else to do it. But he was in on, like, from the very first time they asked him, he was like a kid. He's like that kid in Willy Wonka with a golden ticket. That's exactly how he was with all these microwave weapons. This is an opportunity for this guy. This isn't horror. This isn't murder to him. This is opportunity. And he's he's an ex-army guy who has a family like, I'd hate, to, I mean, I have, I've seen people who don't have families and live alone do this stuff. I mean, at least he's got to go through his wife to do it, and that's, I guess, kind of helped us both. It's kind of helped him from becoming a cold-blooded murderer, and it's helped me because I can still kind of survive. Like, I don't know, I don't know. It's, I, she's trying to help him and me, I think, like his wife. I mean, I because she's a good person and she's in the know about all this. She's the only good person that's in the know. So, and I've, I mean, I don't want to call these people who are uh, terrorizing me. I don't want to call them bad people because I don't want to be hurt anymore. But I don't, I don't see how else this this fits. It's like good people don't murder strangers. It's, it's common sense. I mean, I don't know. You guys, you think I'm right? Like good people don't kill people. You don't. You know, you don't try and smash their lives. You just go about your own business. I don't I don't see how that's so hard. I've never attacked his family, never attacked his kids, never attacked his wife, uh, but he wants me dead. I mean, he, he they're shooting it at my chest. I have a video out, heart pains, um, and they usually don't do that all the time, but he's, he's definitely he's pushing that line up. He's pushing that line up every day where he's doing all this murderous stuff and killing a human being 
but they'll watch me, and if I'm using the bathroom, they're like, yeah, see, see the way he's using the bathroom? It's like the most bizarre, twisted thing that I could ever imagine. And, I mean, I've got to fight it whatever way I can. I'm going to be way more discerning in who I call, but I did, like, even after getting put into the psychiatric unit, I called the FBI. They did laugh in my face. The guy laughed in my face. I kind of wonder about that. I kind of wonder about that because they're the FBI. They got to know this stuff is going on. And I was like, yeah, my neighbor, you know, he's he's been hitting me. I actually had to go to a psychiatric unit. He goes, wait, wait, stop. Okay, call your local law enforcement. And I was like, well, I, I can't call them. I've called them out here, and they can't do anything, and they're going to throw me in there again. And he started laughing at that. Like, he started laughing, and he was like, just call your local law enforcement. Bye. And just didn't even, he's like hung up on me, basically. Um, so that's, it. I guess it's funny to some people. It's like you're getting roasted with microwave radiation and they're like, oh yeah, we're getting him. We're getting him out of here like you're an animal. And they're just like torturing you and murdering you. I don't, I don't get the whole thing. I'm, I'm at a loss for not understanding why this is fun, why people would do it, uh, why people would do it to, um, you know, people that aren't threats. Um, I guess it is, I guess it is a big kind of guinea pig thing it's to test the people who are doing it and to test the people that are getting murdered see how quickly we get cancer uh to see uh how fast our family familial relationships crumble um like to see how fast your life can disintegrate and you can be made homeless um and what dr john hall said is he's the he's an, a board certified uh anesthesiologist and pain pain uh chronic pain doctor um you know he said that you know, it's to see how fast someone can get cancer, but he's like, you can do that in six months. In six months' time, you can you can put somebody out on the street or, uh, you know, see their family relations crumble. Uh, he, so he's like, some of that doesn't even make sense, you know, because it's like they do it for years. I mean, I've heard people who've gone through this for like 20 years, and they, they killed themselves. They were just like, I can't do it anymore. I can't wait for help. Uh, this is worse than even dying, uh, living in complete pain all the time. Like, I'll never say that. Uh, life is too precious for me. Uh, but I understand. Like, I'm I'm not saying the people who commit suicide or attack their neighbors, like, I'm really not judging them. And I want to be clear about that because I understand how much pain is involved in this. And I'm no better and no worse than those people, you know, who have done it. I'm not going to do that, though. Um, like I said, I understand, I understand it without condemning or condoning it. Uh, that's what... That's what uh, Doctor Doctor Manhattan said in uh, in Watchmen. He's like, I understand, without condemning or condoning. Like, so I understand people attacking their neighbors uh, or people committing suicide. I understand it without condemning or condoning it uh, because of the the kind of pain that we do go through. Uh, but I'm never going to do that. I'm not going to attack this guy physically. Um, you know, I'm going to try and maybe sue him uh, someday soon. Like, try and get some kind of, just squeeze some kind of justice out of this, uh, you know, I, but I'm, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on the big guy, because right now I got bigger, important things than this guy, or going after him, you know, I've got a family who I care about, um, and they're hurting, so I've got to figure out a way to make money, and to, to help them, no matter what, uh, even through this guy, I mean, I went over there and, and worked, um, you know, on some stuff for my mom, and, you know, he was just nailing me over there. It's not work for cancer patients. Like, I work, we are, my mom uh, is, is a, has a charity, has a charitable organization where she tries to, to raise money for cancer patients or for anybody with this disease or that disease. She's worked for Red Cross before, so what she's doing is helping cancer patients on this, uh, this uh, huge scale. Um, and, you know, I want to help her, but now since, you know, since it's all happened like this, she doesn't want my help because I'm inconsistent and, uh, it's just not that she doesn't want my help, but I'm inconsistent with, because of this stuff and, uh, and it really just hurts us as a family. I mean, my dad having that aneurysm, we, hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm very sure that these guys had something to do with that. I'm very sure of it, um. I just, I really hope they're not hitting my mom, too, like, 
All right, guys. Okay, well, I know I've probably drained the life out of y'all with this video because I'm being, uh, I'm just kind of like, I'm at a loss, you know, and I know, like, making this video does make me feel good because I can at least give y'all some information that may help y'all or just, just listening to somebody go through this, uh, somebody else may, may make you feel better, makes me feel better to see all the people making videos, um, this will, there will come an end to this, there will be an end to this, and we will have justice in this country, uh, this co country is about justice, it's about being free to do whatever you want, um, in the confines of not hurting other people, it's about the pursuit of happiness, it's about having privacy rights, um, you know, I think this, the, after 9-11, the Patriot Bill, like, I've seen videos where, you know, a lot of congressmen, a lot of senators uh, were just like, you know, you're doing things that you're not even telling the American people that you're doing uh, by using this, this uh, the Patriot Act. Um, you know, they're like, you're, you, our government is doing stuff now that was never, you know, they're interpreting that Patriot Act uh, to do things that may even include radiation torture and uh, covert harassment uh, to, I guess, undesirables and... Uh, I guess criminals or whatever. Like, I guess I'm a criminal because I smoked weed, but whatever. I mean, I'm I'm not. I've never hurt anybody, um, and I'll I'll fess up to that. I'll fess up to that right now. I've done it on all my videos. Uh, weed is like legal in a bunch of uh, states, and it really does. Like, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of my autoimmune disorder, but it heals it. It heals it. Like, uh, heals it. Not not just like. Oh, it stops it for a little while. It stops the pain. Heals my autoimmune disorder, um, and that is a fact. And I'm not not exaggerating. I'm not making that more uh, more than it really is. I'm not exaggerating. It heals. It heals my autoimmune disorder. And I've seen people with my my kind of disease lose their digestive systems, like lose their digestive systems completely to where they eat something they, and it has to go into a bag. Um, and so I thank God and He. He did. He led me to that decision because I was like, I prayed about it, and I was like, it can't hurt anybody, but I could maybe go to jail. Uh, I could be given a fine. And I think now, now uh, weed is pretty much you just get a fine if you're not selling it. Um, I don't know about that. That's a complicated issue. This whole thing is is very complicated. Um, wow. Well, now I'm at a, hundred, a minute. I mean, uh, uh, an hour and twenty one minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and end it, guys. I always do this. Y'all know I always do this. Um, I need to maybe break them down into 15-minute spots. But I just, I like talking to y'all. Like, I really do. Like, I know, it's not like right now when I'm making this video on my phone, like, I don't feel connected with y'all now. But then I put them up in the comments, and then I feel, like, connected. I feel like we're doing something right. Like, I feel like because of how heavy my vehicular harassment is, these people need to stop me. Like, they, they really have that um, that kind of whiff of that. Like, they really need to stop me. This guy is like, I have to do this. I hear him on the microwave here and saying he has to do it. Um, they're scared. I mean, they're scared that this information is going to get out and somebody's going to see it who can actually do something. Um, you know, they, they are. Like, my vehicular harassment is off the, the chart. It is just like, I'll see, I mean, driving in a day, just in a, a whole day of me driving around, um, I would count. I count about twenty to thirty cars with the one light thing coming around me, and these are different cars most of the time. Um, and then I'll see, ev like on days, uh, on days when you wouldn't need headlights, I see a bunch of those, way more than the one light thing. But I'm kind of just like, well, people can have their lights on because it's so many people that I don't even want to, uh, I don't even want to let that in my mind that there are so many people doing that and just driving around like little jerks, like, oh yeah, oh, oh, harassing that guy. And most of these ones with the one light, I've seen they have handicapped parking and they have tenant windows. So I think what these people do, the ones that are really involved with it, they get handicapped parking somehow and they're not handicapped. They tint their windows, they do the vehicular harassment, but they also are, are kind of tuned in or are on the internet. You know, I think it's a, a pretty much a, um, like some kind of IMing or it's some kind of message over the internet that, that brings these people together to do this. Um, 
and they will uh, use those handicap stickers to get to a handicap spot like wherever you're going so they can be in there before you sometimes I think that I don't think it's been used like that on me and I've never I, I really don't notice if people are harassing me like when I go to Walmart or the supermarket or anything like that if they are harassing me um, I don't know it because I look at people I say hey you know, if they're in my way or something like that, and I get out of their way, you know, so I don't notice if somebody's trying to push a shopping cart to hit me or get in front of me, or I don't, I don't notice it, you know. Um, I do notice the vehicular harassment, because just the one light thing on cars that are not junk heaps, they're cars that are really nice, like, really nice uh, SUVs that are just, they look so clean they're tinted windows and then they have one headlight off but everything else about the car is in perfect working condition i don't think so you know um and it is it's about 20 to 30 cars on a on a regular day with the one light thing so so they are they do kind of pump that up i haven't been seeing policemen lately though um but that may change i don't know because everybody's given different information this guy is like telling people who are in on it in the house is what's going on, but probably they I am, you know, this guy, whatever they say, whatever lie they tell about you, this guy's doing this and we need you because they train some people. I think the FBI trains some people to do this. Uh, that's what I've heard. That's a theory. That's a theory and not a fact. I'm not anti-FBI. There are just things that are very confusing about this and people really seem to uh, think that it is the right thing to do. They seem to think that it is... Uh, you know, given by some type of authority figure that they can do this. I don't want to badmouth the FBI, though. This is a theory, um, and maybe it actually works out. I, I, okay, I want to get off of that because I'm, I'm going into La La Land. I want to take that back, what I said about the FBI. I heard a rumor that the FBI trained people to do this stuff. I heard a rumor. It was a rumor. Um, so I want to be very clear about that. It was a rumor, and I don't know about it. Um, I just know that there are people out there who do do this stuff and they feel uh, like they're backed up. I mean, they feel like they've got backup, they're not going to get in trouble for it. And I mean, how would somebody get tr uh, in trouble for having a one light on their car? These people have figured out ways uh, to harass you and nail you to a wall in a way that it's like, what, what are you talking about? I was just doing this, you know? Um, so I want to back up off of that. Uh, I'm pro-FBI, I'm pro-CIA, I'm pro-DHS, I'm pro military, I'm pro policeman, I'm pro authority figure. If the authority figures are good and they're trying to help people, I am pro authority. Uh, now this guy is ex army, he's doing it to me. Uh, I am anti him. I'm not anti army, I'm not anti marines, I'm not anti any of that. I'm anti him because he is torturing me in my house. So I'm not anti army at all. I'm not anti authority in any way whatsoever. Um, now, I just want to make that very clear on these videos. I'm not anti-police. I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying we should all go out and burn houses down. Uh, I'm anti-terrorism. Um, you know, I want to make that very clear on these videos. These videos are faith-based, and they are about um, you know stopping this, the gang stalking, stopping the electronic torture, stopping the stuff. That's all these are. I'm not trying to oust anybody or you know make any organizations look bad I'm really not um, I'm really really not and that's not a lie that I'm saying I have theories about who does this and why they do it um, but I want to kind of leave those theories on the ground right now um, and just tell y'all what's happening in my life and uh, you know what I'm doing to get through this because I think that could maybe help y'all to understand your own situation especially if this has just started happening to you um, and I would say if this has just started happening to you and you're in an apartment or something uh, and you can't break the lease, just leave. I mean, just leave. If it's just started, just get away. Don't don't be like, I can take care of this and handle this because they will make it so big uh, that there is no handling it. Um, if you stay in that, in that specific place, I think the smartest thing for us to do is when it first starts, get away. Get away because they won't have the resources yet. To, to you know track you down they won't be able to to lie as good if it's just started because I'm five years into this and it's getting brutal like it's getting brutal where everybody will just join in and torture me um, and there are very few very people that are good very few and far between um, but but there are good people out there 
there are more good people than these bad guys, but what happens, and I've said this before, they get right up on you. They put all the bad people right up next to you so that you feel like, oh, it's all these bad people and, you know, that's to the world and stuff like that. Not true. There's more good people, way more good people. I'm talking like this may be 10% of our population that's really evil and would do this. But, and that's a, that's a pretty high percentage that, you know, I'm just making up. But um, they get right up to you. You know, they get right up to you so you think those are the only people in the world. Um, all right, man, I'll, I'll talk to you guys on the next video. I've made this, it's an hour and 30 minutes. I meant to make a 15-minute video. Um, but I do have a lot to say on this, and I still have a lot more to say. Um, no matter what they do or if they use these videos against me, y'all will be able to see it happening. And I want y'all to see it happen. I want you to, to look at those comments. It's on the uh, organized gang stalking, what not to do. Wolverine's smiling real weird. Um, and uh, so I think what, but there's, uh, he's probably going to comment on all my videos. You know, I think they do it across the board. And I'm going to leave these. A lot of them were spam videos, these negative comments. But I unspammed them and I put them out. Because uh, I want y'all to see what these guys are all about. Like, you can see, like, they think that they're doing something that's going to hurt me. But they're only doing stuff that, um, you know, will make me look even better. Um, and I saw, I've seen a lot of, uh, you know, people who are gang stalked, especially on, on YouTube or on the internet, where they get a lot of negative comments and they stop their comments. You know, they drop and they're like, I'm not going to do comments because these people are saying this. I want y'all to see it. I want y'all to see how these people are, you know, and you'll know it. You'll know it when you see it. You'll know you'll know evil when you see it. Um, all right, guys. Um, live long and prosper. Um, I love all of you guys. I love you uh, because of the situation you're in, and because we're all intelligent people. Uh, we're not. We're we're all gonna get out of this. This is gonna stop. It will stop. It's just a matter of time now. Um, it really is. It's just a matter of time before our society uh, in America stops this. They put a stop to it. Um, I love you guys. Uh, God also loves you. Um, and I'll just I'll close it out with prayer because it's such a long video, um, so I'll, so I'll have to stop it. Um, God, uh, please just grant us serenity uh, today and in, in these upcoming days. And uh, please just grant us serenity if uh, we're being tortured or hurt. Um, and, and just let us look to you. Let us look to, to what you want us to do um, with this. Because we're all looking uh, for, for what to do. We're looking to you for what to do in this situation. Please, you know, put it in our hearts of our friends and our families that we're not crazy. Um, so that they can deal with us on a fair and balanced level. Um, and that good people, please give good people the strength to go on and, uh, you know, get past these people who want to torture and murder us. Um, please send down your helper, the Holy Spirit. Please send him to, to all of our hearts. Um, please uh, clear our, our environment so that we can find peace, so that we can make money, so that we can do the best things for our family that we're able to. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Um, I love you guys. Uh, peace out, and there will be more videos. Um, you know, just be strong. Just keep going, and I promise you, this will, this is going to end shortly. I mean, I don't know. It may be a couple of years, it may be a couple of months, but these weapons will be banned. They've been banned in other countries, and uh, we have enough good people in our country, enough God-fearing men, that it will end. You know, I, I believe that. That's what I believe. I'll see you guys later. Uh, peace out, and I love you all.